Hello and welcome to another OpenShift tutorial. In this video, we are going to see how to back your application with a persistent storage. This persistent storage can be of different types. Generally, in production environments, it might be your uh, like NetApp storage or uh, Google PDisk or Amazon EBS volume. So there are a number of storage types you can use uh, in OpenShift. But in this example, we are going to use the default created uh, host volumes for that i'm going to use a local openshift cluster uh, starting with oc cluster app all we need to do is have two things one of them is docker for mac or docker for windows and then the other thing that you need to have is oc command line tool so with these two tools i'm going to set up a local openshift cluster and then use the host volumes as person storage for your applications. So for that, I'm going to start Docker first. And also open a terminal. So I have a OpenShift command line tool called OC and the current version is OC, uh, 3.6. So I'm going to use that. So once you have Docker for Mac or Docker for Windows running, to set up an OpenShift cluster on your local machine, all you need to do is just say OC cluster up, then it will start a local OpenShift cluster. What this process also does is uh, it creates a bunch of host volumes and uh, provides them as persistent volumes um, in ready-made in your cluster so that you can use these persistence volumes as storage for your applications. So these applications can be a web application or maybe a database application as well. So uh, both of them work. So once the cluster is up, you will get a URL to log in and also uh, credentials to log into your OpenShift cluster from CLI. So I'm going to log in as system admin inside that OpenShift cluster and then also log in inside this OpenShift web console. You can pretty much use any username and password. Uh, in this example, I'm going to use say dev and then dev. So my project is up and my cluster is up and running. I'm going to create a project called um, let's say dev project. All right. So I can add applications here. Maybe I want to deploy a MySQL, MySQL database. So click on data stores and then select uh, MySQL persistent or MySQL uh, ephemeral. You can select both of them, but by default, it gives you MongoDB persistent or MySQL persistent like templates, like persistent templates for your databases. But uh, you can actually spin up an ephemeral and also add persistent storage later. So if you click on the MySQL person storage here and then give default values, if you leave them empty, it is going to auto generate those values for you. And they can, you can see that the default volume capacity is about one gigabyte and then hit create. So you can use these credentials later to log into the MySQL container. This is going to pull Docker image from Red Hat registry and then spin up. And then if you click on storage, you can also see a MySQL volume, a, a person's volume uh, claim has been provisioned for you, for your application. Uh, just ignore this 100 gigabytes capacity. Uh, it's basically showing everything on your laptop, but you can see a, a person's storage has been already provisioned. Right, so your application is already backed up uh, with that storage. But sometimes you have to spin up your applications in an ephemeral mode and then you want to add storage later. Right, so let's see how it is done. So I'm going to deploy an application from Docker Hub. So I have an application called Go Welcome inside Docker Hub. I'm going to deploy that. I'm going to leave the defaults and hit create. 
let's say this application needs some kind of storage how do I, how do i add storage to this particular application so let's say this application wants some kind of storage at a location called slash temp slash config so how do i add the add storage at that place so i just go to create storage um, on menu or uh, left menu and then hit on hit create and then I would name my storage as uh, welcome storage, something like that. And then choose the access mode based on your application, whether it is read only single, uh, like read only or single uh, write or multiple writes. You can choose any access modes, but this, this depends on mostly on the date, date uh, like percent volume as well. So let's say I want one gigabyte of storage for my application. I just hit create. At this point, you will get a uh, object of OpenShift called claim. So this claim, you can use it anywhere in your applications. So this storage is created, but not bound to any application as of now. If you want to bind it to any application, just click on the corresponding deployment configuration. So this is my application. So click on deployment here and then click on configuration. And then go to volumes at the bottom click on add storage and then select the corresponding storage which you have already claimed or you can create one a new one here so i select i selected my storage that i've created before and then i want this storage to be located at some temp slash config or some temp slash data location and then of course choose sub parts inside it um, also give a name to that particular volume but i'm gonna just stick with the defaults and then say uh, add here so what happens is the storage that you provision uh, it can be a nfs storage or it can be a ebs storage whatever type of storage that you have already configured for your openship cluster that storage will be mounted at this particular location of your application so from the developer point of view uh, it appears that the storage that you provisioned is available at that particular location that's it as simple as that and then hit add, add here now you can see a new deployment is happening because you change your uh, configuration now if i go to that particular location using terminal cd slash temp slash data that's empty now i'm gonna create a simple file So I said I created a file called test.txt. What I'm going to do now is scale it down to zero and then scale it back to one again. This time this pod might turn up on a different machine, not the same old machine. But even then you should see your percent volume already backed up this application so if you go back to slash temp slash config sorry uh, data and then test you can see your file is available so even if your container goes down and comes on a different machine your data will be as it is because that data is backed up by a persistent volume so who exactly is providing this storage so if you want to see uh, that details, you can just say OC get PV and you can see the number of person volumes has been already provisioned and uh, attached to this particular cluster. And these are two types again. One of them is you can already pr like pre-provision these person volumes and then make it available for your cluster. But sometimes you can make it dynamically provisioned if you are using something like Gluster, uh, which automatically provisions storage whenever you request it. And there is some other concept called storage classes where you can define different quality of storages, like your storage classes, and then make them available for your end users. So let's say your developers will be given only bronze type of, type of storage, whereas your production will get gold type of storage. So you can different 
you can create different types of storage classes and then uh, associate them with your users. Sorry about that. And if you want to see what kind of storage this is, select the person volume and then say OC edit PV and then give the person storage name. So this storage, as you see here, is basically a host path storage. So it's basically using a directory that is already available in, on your local laptop as a storage for your application. That's how you can see what exactly that person storage is all about. In the same way, you can use many other storages, like I said, Gluster, Ceph, and also uh, many other cloud storage as well. And also in the tab storage, um, I've seen it frequently. I hope this is useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me on Twitter. My Twitter ID is twitter.com slash Debian master. You can follow me here and ask questions. Thank you very much.